had lots of people ask me to do a video on how to make my um, junk journals that I've been making lately. And I've kind of been putting it off and dragging my feet on it because, um, for one thing, I mean, they're kind of easy. They're really basic. And I know that, you know, you still need to see that. I'm, it doesn't matter how basic something is. If I'm going to try to make something that I've seen of yours, I, I want to see how you do it. So, you know, I get it that even you, you need to see the steps that go into doing something really basic. That I get. But the, I think the reason that I've been putting it off is because of the nature of these junk journals. There, There's really no rules. It's kind of, you know, I just make it up as I go. It's sort of like trying to teach someone how to do collage. You know, when you do a collage, there are certain things that you can teach, you know, like composition and balance and, you know, color theory, whatever. But for the most part, collage doesn't have many rules. You just kind of make it up as you go. It's really, it's really hard to, to, you know, teach collage. And I kind of feel the same way about these junk journals. It's kind of hard to, to teach it because there's not steps that you go through. But I can show you what I do, and then you can kind of take it from there. And I've got some that are already um, kind of made up. These, I have the covers done. I have the inside pages done. And I'm getting ready to put in the little... Um, uh, journaling spots and if you can see right here I have my papers all laid out and ready to go and I'll, I'll actually do one and show you how I just randomly pick what goes in there well it's not really random I do kind of think about it but this is basically how the journal starts um, I'll just show you kind of from the beginning and then we will pick up here at the at the journaling spots and I'll do it with you. But these start out um, usually as a, I've been using my painted background papers. So uh, sometimes it's usually a magazine page and I've got, you know, I save magazines that have nice thick glossy paper like one of these. Signs. It's got thick glossy pages and those are really good to paint on. So I just rip a page out of there and I paint on it. And that's what this looks. Sometimes I'll just paint on one side, like that one. Sometimes I'll paint on both sides. And this one, you can see it's got a sheen to it. And I think I had um, already gone over this with Mod Podge. I do like to cover my, or put a coat of Mod Podge on my book covers, you know, just for a little added extra sturdiness. Um, but these, they're magazine pages, and the paint does give them a little bit of weight. So, um, you know, they're a little bit sturdier than just a plain sheet of text weight paper, but they're still not super strong. So, um, a lot of times I will put another type of page on the inside, um, usually with lines on it or something, just to add some extra sturdiness you know extra support and also to you know I like to have plenty of blank spots in the journals for people to write on or to glue pictures on or whatever so this is how they start sometimes they will start out like this with I love these big junk mail postcards like this and um, I save these anytime they end up in my mailbox because, you know, they're a nice big size. You fold them over, instant book cover. Sometimes I will paint directly on these, but if I'm not in the mood to get all my paints and stuff out, I will dig through my bin of already painted papers. You know, when you do painted background papers like this, just make up a whole bunch. Make up more than you think that you're going to need and then save the extras because then I can take this, I can glue one of my painted background papers on it, and then I've got a, a nice sturdy book cover like that without having to drag out all my paint. And for gluing these together, I've talked before about Yes Paste, and this is what I use. It's called Yes Paste. You can get it at 
some of the craft stores, um, Joann's sometimes carries it, Michael's has it. You can get it at the art supply stores, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it at, oh, I've seen it at Paper Source, um, Archivers, you know, scrapbook stores. So it's not hard to find. You just might not have ever seen it because it, it's one of those, it just doesn't jump out and grab you. It kind of blends in the background. If you're not looking for it, you may not see it. And, oh, I glued my lid shut. I really like it. I'm going to do that. Okay. I'm going to get this lid off eventually so that I can show you. Wow, this is really stuck. Oh, got it. You really should clean around the rim of your lid before you close it. <laughs> it will glue itself shut. But here's what it looks like. It's kind of gross. I usually put, I have a little squirt bottle, and I'll squirt just a little bit of water in there because it is, you can thin it out with water. If you don't thin it, it's just really, really thick. And just for gluing papers together, I don't really need it that thick. So I'll add a little bit of water, thin it out just a little bit, and then spread it on with an old credit card or gift card and it stays wet, it dries slowly so it stays wet long enough for you to you know move your papers around and reposition them um, you know get it just like you want and then leave it to let it dry but that's Yes Paste um, this is the big one of the bigger sizes it comes in another container that's about half that size and that's the size you should probably buy if you're just wanting to try it out because it will go bad. Um, this will last for about a year and then it's going to start to go funky on you. So if you buy a larger container, you might share some with a friend even um, because it, it doesn't last forever. And don't, don't glue your lid on like I did. So that's what I use for attaching decorative papers to... Um, heavier, you know, postcards or cardstock to use for the book covers. And then, once I've got my covers ready, I will start putting the guts together. And as you can see from this little setup, you know, I like to spread my stuff out. I have a big bin and stacks of books and magazines and old newspapers and maps and vintage papers and um, music, uh, you know, um, sheet music and stuff like that that I pull from. But instead of spreading all of that out, I usually just open up several of them, tear out several sheets, and just make a stack of loose papers from those books to choose from. So I will end up with something looks maybe a little bit like this. You know, these are just stacks of randomness that I pulled out of other books to use for my pages in my junk journal. And then I will spread them out sort of like that and um, sometimes by size or by type, just whatever I'm feeling like that day. And then I will just start pulling papers out and putting them together in my journal just in whatever random way I'm feeling like that day. There's no formula. There's no pattern. Um, I usually do five or six at a time and all five or six will be similar because you know if I pull out a um, Japanese newspaper sheet for this one I'll do it for all five. You know because I'm just kind of my brain automatically wants to be even and symmetrical and um, I have to do forced randomness, you know, because that's not my nature. It's not my nature to be random, so I have to think about it. So I allow myself to, you know, put a sheet from the same Japanese newspaper in each of my journals, but, um, you know, that page is going to look a little different in each one. And, you know, they're still, even though they've got the same type of paper in them, they're not going to be identical. You know what I'm saying? Because... You know, I may pull five pages from the same magazine and use one page in each journal, but that magazine page is going to look different in each one. So, you know, I get that. I get a little bit of my anal retentive need to be symmetrical and even, along with some randomness. 
and I'll kind of play with them as I choose them. Sometimes, see like this was a whole magazine page. Oh, I've already glued it. And sometimes I will cut it to fit my cover, but sometimes I will fold it like I did this one. Put a little glue, put a little glue here, because then that makes a pocket. So the, this will be the binding. It will be bound right there. So I'll have a pocket here and a pocket here. And I just kind of randomly choose a few to fold and make pockets, and then some um, I just cut down to fit, you know, just whatever. So that's that's how I choose the papers that I use. Just, you know, pull out some from my stash, line them up, and then just start picking them out and putting them in. No big deal. It's really it's impossible for me to, to give you a formula for that because there isn't one. Just do what makes you happy. Okay, so now, once I get all the pages in, um, and sometimes I will sew the pockets instead of glue them, and sometimes I will, you know, on my short sheets like these, I might sew another piece right here or glue a piece right there. But on these particular journals, these are for a craft show that's coming up, and I want to keep the cost down. So I'm not doing a lot of sewing in them because, you know, that takes extra time and effort, which um, makes me charge a little bit more. And these all have just plain painted covers on them. This one was a, a decal, a um, gel medium transfer decal thing that I was just, I didn't know how it would work on that, so I tried it, and it worked really well. So that's all that is. But for the most part, I'm leaving them blank because I like the painted papers. I think they're pretty. I don't want to cover them up. But it's your choice. If you don't use painted papers for your covers, you know, then you can do some collage on there or, you know, just stick an image on, whatever you want. So now we're at the point of um, making the insets. Let's just start with this one. So, here's what I do. And I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show you this. Let's just see. I need to move back a little bit. Okay, weird camera angle, but let's be the best I can do. I've got a bin full of different kinds of notepads and just random notepapers. I've bought, you know, I'll buy them on a clearance rack or a Tuesday morning. Most of them are freebies. You know, every time we stay at a hotel, there's those notepads. They want you to steal their stationery. They really do. I know they do. So I do. I steal the stationery. I don't steal it. I take it home because, by gosh, I'm pretty sure I paid for it in some way. But I just pull from my stash, you know, four or five sheets of each, um, each notepad or whatever that I want to pick from and I'll line them up because I like to you know I like to have them lined up out where I can see them because that's easier for me to pick from and for these I do kind of put them by size you know the similar sizes together because um, that's normally what I look for I'll show you <clears throat> okay this first page I like this image I really don't want to cover that up because that's really pretty I'm going to leave that one just like it is. Oh, look. That one's equally as pretty. I don't think I want to cover that one either. This one, this is just a weird little um, magazine page that I, I distressed within an inch of its life, really. But I like the way it feels. And, yeah, it's kind of torn here and there. This one would be okay to cover up. So, I'm going to go to my stash and see what I'm going to cover that up with. And I think I want to put something with lines on it. Some of my notepads are lined, some are not. So I'm just going to grab one. This one is a lined sheet. And I think it will go nicely right there. I'm going to have to trim it a little bit, and that'll be fine. But yeah, I like that. So that'll be my, um, sorry, camera trouble. That one will go there. Okay, next. Um, this is not really attractive, so I'm going to put something there. I think maybe I'll just do the bottom half. And these little notepad thingies 
are a good size for that. So I'm going to take one of these and I believe I will put it maybe right there. Just like that. This one, okay, their heads look funny because they kind of fell in the crease like that. So I'm almost really tempted to leave it because it does look like just three random floating heads, but I don't know. That's a little weird. So let's find another sheet. Um, maybe this one. And I'll put it right there just to kind of cover their heads. You know what? That covers too much of the page. I like I like this part right here. So I'm going to get a skinnier one. And that's one advantage of, you know, putting these kind of with like sizes together. Because I know my tall skinnies are down here. This is a good tall skinny. And here's what I can do. I will put it, well, I'm get one. I don't need all of them. Glue it right there, just like that. And we'll probably make this a fold up. Fold it so that it can be like that. So there's what I'll do there. So I just continue through the book just like that. Most of the time on these little short ones like this, I will attach another piece right there, either like one of these long skinny ones, like that, or I'll do, I sometimes have pieces of these like ledger sheets or whatever, and I might like glue that right there like that and make it a fold out. See? So, you know, whatever. There's lots of options. And that's what I do is just go through and choose what I want to go in there for the little journaling spots. Then, I just glue those down. And let me find, I think I have one that had some ready to glue down. Or did I already glue? No, this one. Okay. Yeah, this one I'd already started on, and the inside front covers were um, the back of whatever I painted on, and I didn't like them, so I, put, I glued down some lined paper. This one I thought fit perfect right there, So, and this is the pocket sheet, so I'm going to glue that in just like that. And my, my go-to glue for this, you can use whatever glue you like best. This is the one I tend to reach for most often, is the Tombow Mono Multi Liquid Glue. It has a fat end and a skinny end, and it is extremely sticky. It's what I would call a dry glue, um, because it's, um, I mean, it's liquid. It's a wet glue, but it doesn't buckle your paper. Um, so it's, you know, it's not like not like a PVA glue, like an Elmer's glue, which I consider to be a wet glue. It's um, and it dries. You know, if I just put a line right here and let it dry, it's tacky. It dries tacky, and which is really good if you like want to put um, if you're foiling over it or you want to put some glitter on it or whatever. You know, that's a, a good thing. This is just one of my favorite glues, and. Sometimes, you know, you get the little the little booger, the glue booger that, that gets in the top. Okay, no, we're good now. Sometimes it, um, you have to pull the little booger out. But I just make sure I get right up against the edge really good. And then lightly in the middle. Just like that. Then I just glue this puppy down. And I'm kind of on a weird angle. I'm off to the side of the camera, and it's odd, but best I can do today. This one I have to be careful because unlike Yes Glue, this one dries quickly, like almost instantly, so you don't have a lot of time to mess around with positioning your paper. You know, once it's down, it's down. And then when it dries, these little areas that you can see, they'll fade out. They won't be quite as prominent as they are. But that's all I do. This was a post-it note, and I liked it right there, so I just stuck it there. I liked this just like it was, so I left it. Um, this one, I decided that I wanted to put this, let's see, I think I wanted it here. Yeah, that looks good. So, 
and I this is my thing you know I'm in my art room which is actually another guest bedroom and I don't have a work table I have a bed in here so I've got one of these um, sewing board things you can get like at Hancock Fabric or at Joanne I think they're about 10 bucks and they're big you know it spreads out over my whole bed and that's kind of my work surface you can see it's got paint all over it I can glue all over it and this one I've had for about a year so you know it it lasts and it's gonna wear out eventually but you know then it's just another 10 bucks to go get a new one and to me that's just a really cheap solution for my working on my bed problem so got glue on my thingy and I think I will put it right there there's my other sheet so that's all there is to that I'll just go through choose papers glue them down then we'll sew the binding um, my battery's running out so I'm going to replace my battery and then show you how to run this through your sewing machine so I'll be back before we go to the binding part I forgot to mention one little thing about the gluing um, if you're using a really tacky glue like this one that dries sticky to glue in your little um, journaling spots and whatever it might be a good idea to go back when you're finished and check for sticky spots because this kind of glue you know if for some reason you get a little bit where you're not supposed to it will stay sticky forever it doesn't ever get not sticky unless you know it gets other stuff stuck to it so what I do is I take a little bit of <clears throat> This is just a like a cornstarch baby powder or that um, shower to shower bath powder with some cornstarch in it and then a soft brush and I just go around and just lightly brush around my glued pieces with the powder and what that does is the powder will stick to any stray glue and it will make it not sticky um, so it actually it works really well so that's what I do. There's a little trick to keep your sticky glue from being constantly sticky all the time. Just hit it with a little bit of this um, powder so that that sticks to it and everything else won't. Okay, now we're going to go to the binding. So before I start sewing, I will sometimes clamp my book pages down like this just to keep them from shifting until I can get them fed through the machine because um, sometimes my pages are short and you know they're not all the same size and they'll want to kind of move around so you can clamp them together if you want just to kind of hold them till you get your um, sewing started and I'm using my old this is like a 22 year old baby lock sewing machine very basic you know it doesn't do anything fancy it's not even the you know digital kind and um, I don't technically know how to sew and I think that this machine knows that I don't know how to sew so it sort of um, helps me along and it's just very tolerant of <laughs> some of the things I do to it but um, I use just regular thread and I usually will use um, two different colors you know one for the the top and then a different one for the bobbin just because that's fun um, but I don't use any kind of special thread I don't use any special needle I have some of those heavy-duty ones you know like you're supposed to use for denim or leather but I've never had to use them it's just a plain regular needle and so far it's done just fine and I know these dials up here like one is for your stitch length and one is for tension and I don't really know which is which and I don't really know what that means I mean I understand stitch stitch length and I know tension has something to do with making sure that it doesn't bunch up on the back but I'm not real sure how I'm supposed to set them so I just choose a straight stitch setting <clears throat> and then I have this piece of scrap material that I run through there and then I just start turning these dials <laughs> until it gets like I want and it finally did you know right here I turned them until I had 
you know, a fairly long stitch. You don't want little bitty tiny ones because that, that really sort of just perforates your paper and makes it really easy to tear away. You want long straight stitches and then the tension just so that it doesn't bunch up on the back. You know, people who sew will know how to set that. I just run it through there and start sewing and play with these dials until it looks the way I want it. So, yeah, we get along. Now, um, okay, now we're going to start sewing. I'm going to have to adjust my camera, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my little journal in here, and I've got it lined up to where I think it's going to hit right about in the middle. I don't usually get it exactly right, but I don't worry much about it. Because I'm going to do at least two passes through here. I'm going to do two um, seams kind of right next to each other, just so that it's, you know, extra good and reinforced. And my pages don't go all the way to the top of the cover, but I start at the cover anyway, and then, you know, I do that back stitch thing for just a couple stitches just to make sure that it holds. And sometimes my needle will complain and it won't want to go through, so I'll use the little knob thing to force it. And then once we get sewing, it, it complies. So let's see. A little back stitch. Oh, that one always gets in the way. Yeah, I just fumble through this, but you know what? It usually turns out. And then the only thing that I have to fight with is just to keep it straight as it goes through. Because, you know, this doesn't really want paper. So, um, it does tend to wiggle it. But, let's keep it going. You see it's starting to complain. Usually if I keep it going fast, it does fine. When I slow down, it starts to complain. So I try to keep it going fast. Now these clamps are in my way and I've got it in enough to where it's not going to shift too bad, so I'm going to get rid of those. And then back stitch a little bit there. And oh! My thread came out. I wonder when. It looks like it made it all the way through and didn't come out to the end. So that's good. And sometimes the thread breaks, but um, I just rethread it and go on. Okay, let me get this rethreaded and then we'll do another one. Okay, there we've got our first seam right down the middle and you can see that it's like pretty much exactly in the middle on this side but I didn't quite have it lined up exactly and I'll tell you what I never do and I don't know why because it feels lined up but it never is that's just the way it goes and it's all kind of gubbered up right here and I don't care about that because I put a piece of um, when I'm done I'll put a piece of either washi tape or some of that decorative duct tape along the spine just to reinforce it and kind of hold everything in. So I'm going to do another pass through the machine and I need to try to get it a little closer to the edge here. So I'm going to come just to the left of this seam that I already made. And I'm not going to worry about it being perfect. Just going to kind of get it pretty close. Just eyeball it and then go for it. Ooh, I came I came undone again. Okay. Oh, I came undone at the very beginning. Well, that's all right. When going through thick stacks like this, it just happens. So, I'm going to rethread it and do it again. Now, if this continues to happen and, you know, it's like a problem and I can't get the book bound, that tells me that I'm going to need to either take some pages out of the book because it's too thick or I'm going to have to change needles or threads. And I normally don't have to do that. I just keep pushing it through and eventually it'll cooperate. 
but sometimes I do make a change and the change I usually make is with the thread I'll try a different thread and it'll work so let's see right about here it gets hung up and I'm still good so let's see if we can just push it through and I think we came out again did we come out again? nope we're good yeah we made it I'm going to trim off my ends Sometimes I will leave them long, especially if I have other sewing in the book. I like the look of, you know, all the hairy little pieces of thread. Okay, here we have our two seams. They're not straight. They're not perfect. They're good enough. And between the two of them, we hit the spine just about right. I don't know if you can tell, but we've got it. So it will fold nicely and I'll put my little tape on it and there we have it. So see, there's not much to it. Um, I'll go ahead and do one more so you can see and uh, see if it has the same problem or if it will just go through. All right. See, to my eye, it looks like I've got the middles lined up, but I just know one of them will be exactly in the middle and the other one will be off. And I've just learned to be okay with that. And this one, let me adjust this a little bit. It's too far up on one side. You know, I want my signatures to be kind of centered in the cover as best as I can get them. There we go. Okay, here we go. And you can tell that I'm totally fumbling through this. If I can fumble through this, you can fumble through this. Okay, let's see what happens. We just won't backstitch that one. I went way off the thing. And my thread came out right at the very end. But I got a whole line done. So that's okay. A whole very crooked line done. And I am good with that. Okay, clamps up. And part of my issue too here is that I've got stuff on my around my sewing table and the book hits it and I have to readjust and I know my arm gets in the way, but eventually we get the job done. See, I've got goobers up here again. I always get the goobers, but I actually hit the spine almost, almost pretty good. I think it's a little bit to the right, so I'll put the second stitch on that side this time. Um, okay, rethread, and this. You know what, I don't, this thread should, because it's that silky thread, which I think is supposed to be pretty good thread, and I got it at Tuesday morning, they had a little, like a three pack of it for, I don't remember what it was, five or six dollars, and uh, I like the colors, so I got it, and I looked it up online when I got home and saw that it's kind of pricey for thread, so it should be pretty good thread, and you know, it's not breaking to its credit, but it is just coming out for whatever reason, which kind of surprises me. Usually, thread breaks. But this one isn't. So, um, this way, let's do one more. Okay. 
Okay. And see, I lost it again. But it went all the way to the very end before it came out. It's on that back stitch. Every time I do the back stitch thing, it pulls it out. I don't know what that's all about. I've never really had that problem before, so I'm thinking it's got to be the thread. And there are my two very wobbly seams. And the wobblier the better, because this is a junk journal. And they hit just about right on the spine. So that's it. Now I'll just put a piece of decorative tape or whatever over that. And I will call these puppies done. So there you go. That's how to do your stupid, simple junk journal. You can do it.